So this is what we're making. A sea glass pendant using jump rings to make a bezel. For this project we're using <clears throat> mermaid's tears, sea glass. This is just broken glass tumbled by the ocean so that it has a rough finish, smoothed off. If you don't live by an ocean, go online, Google mermaid's tears or sea glass and there's plenty of it available if, if you have the opportunity to walk on the beach and find some of this stuff it, uh, it makes a nice little organic piece of material to work with so we're going to use jump rings and turn it into a bezel um, this one I use different size jump rings but for the one we're making, I'm going to use the same size jump rings and this material is six millimeters the biggest and four millimeters the smallest. So if I use a six millimeter mandrel and wrap my wire around it and the wire is 0.7, then there will be plenty of material sticking up to push over the edge of the piece. Your wire needs to be annealed. So if you're ordering your wire, order it half hard or dead soft. Otherwise, if it's spring hard, when you wrap it around your mandrel, it'll spring back enough that you would probably have to use a smaller mandrel to end up with the size that you want. So one of the first things I'm going to do is figure out how long my bezel needs to be so I'll know how many jump rings. So I'm just going to lay this on my ruler and run it along. Don't let it slip. So that's roughly 90 millimeters, 9 centimeters. So now I know what area I have to work in. I can make my jump rings, make them approximately this long, solder them together, and then we'll form it into a bezel. I'm just going to use the cordless drill to make my jump rings. So I stick the wire in, turn it 90 degrees. I wouldn't turn it very fast because you'll end up making a mess if you do and if it catches you'll pinch your finger. So you don't want to do that. Get roughly the amount of jump rings you need make another couple of extra and then we'll saw them with our uh, jeweler saw and I use a 4-0 saw blade. Now this is pretty fine wire and we don't want it to catch on our blade otherwise it'll distort the jump ring. So I'm going to put a little bit of beeswax on the blade, run the blade up because we don't want it to clog the teeth, we just want it to lubricate it a little. And I'm going to hold the jump rings on my mandrel. So be sure you brace this against the end of your bench peg, otherwise it'll bend every one of these jump rings as you go to saw it. So once we get a fair number of jump rings cut, 
going to take our parallel jaw pliers and bring the ends together. Now this wire is so thin and so soft you're going to have to be fairly gentle with it to make sure that the join comes together nice, even. Make sure it touches. If it doesn't touch the other side, it'll be difficult to solder or impossible. So close all of your jump rings and then we'll lay them on a charcoal block or any soldering block and solder them together. When you get the joints all fitting perfectly, what we're going to do is line these up so that we have a join, a solid part of a jump ring, a join, a solid part of a jump ring. So take your time. If you make a mistake and get a join off to the side, it, it'll be really obvious, and when you're starting to push this over onto the glass, it'll break apart. So we want to take our time, make sure everything fits perfectly, make sure the join is against a solid part of a jump ring, because that way when we solder it, it will solder the join together and solder to the jump ring at the same time. And I've found that if you just do about four at a time or a small number at a time, it's actually easier to get it correct. If you try to do the whole thing in one go, it, it usually goes a bit wonky. Also called going pear shape. So I'm just using a borax based flux. Make sure it's nice and moist. And you want to make sure that it's a creamy color. If it's, if it's just a clear liquid on top, that's water. And the water doesn't act like a good flux. So when you, when you get them all fluxed, Line them up again, make sure the join touches the solid part of the jump ring. And then we're going to put a millimeter and a half long piece of hard solder at each spot. And we put it so that it just nestles in that little groove in between the two jump rings. Like that. Now this is fairly small wire. You don't need a very big flame for this. So we're just going to circle gently, make sure we dry out the flux. Once the flux is dry, slowly circle one set of jump rings at a time. And when the solder flows, shift to the next one. So you can see that did really well. Now I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to leave this the way it is because the flux will hold it onto the block. Set up the next ones, do it the same way, solder them, another four, do another four.
once you get all of your jump rings soldered together, you want to flip it over and you'll notice that it's stuck to your soldering block just because of flux. So warm it up. Don't try to pry it off. Get it so that it moves on its own accord. Flip it over and look at the other side. And we want to make sure that all of the solder joints are good on the opposite side. These look good. If they didn't look good, you'd go over it with your torch at this time. Uh, smooth out the solder. Quench it, pickle it, and then we'll wrap it around our glass. So this is our piece. And I'm just going to leave the one sticking up because that's going to be my bail and then we'll form it around and then this will just push across and that's the one that isn't soldered. So we'll just push push that across and solder it to here. And you can see that it's pretty much the right size, the right length. I got lucky. Sometimes you get lucky. Uh, so I'll I'll take it take the glass out now, and I'll just push that over and solder it at that point. I'm using hard solder in this. On this one, I'll probably use easy because I'm going up against this and I don't want it to fall apart. I'm going to use my double third hand for this. I could just sit this so that it had pressure against it this way, but chances are this would fall off if I did. So I'm, I'm actually going to hold it. And a little bit of flux. <clears throat> so I'm going to just slowly dry out the flux. You can see I'm moving the flame back and forth. So there, solder flowed. We'll quench in water, pickle and then we're ready to set it on the piece. I'm out of the pickle and I use sodium bisulfate for pickle. You can get it at your pool supply place. Now, because this wire is so thin, it's fairly fragile, so be careful when you're trying to put everything together because it's so easily bent. So take your time. I've got a little burnisher that I'm going to use to push with. And what we can do with this is use a uh, bezel rocker, pusher, so we just do a little bit at a time, I would do a couple of spots, turn it over, a couple of spots on the back side, so we want, we just want to make sure that 
we're doing it evenly on both sides. So a little bit on one side, flip it back over and make sure that the glass is centered. Take your time, work back and forth. This will eventually be pushed right down against the glass. This bit for your bale needs to be hallmarked. And I bend that so it's up. Now I've got most of these so that they've started being pushed over. So at that point, I can just use my parallel jaw pliers to give them a little bit of a squeeze to push it right down against my glass. And you can either polish this at this point or what I'm going to do is use some fine steel wool and <clears throat> just put a satin finish on it because the sea glass itself is a satin finish because of tumbling, tumbling in the sand. And doesn't take much effort. You can see that it's satin, satin, almost shiny. And that's it. The simple little bale and bezel using jump rings.